Hey, Nathan, what's up? Hey. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hi there. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice, to, nice to meet and see some of you guys all over again. Uh, yeah, nice please meet. forgive me, I'm a, little bit, I'm a little bit tired still. I'm still trying to wake up. Uh, I had a late, late, no late night last night. So, um, Same. Uh, unfortunately, so, so I wanted to tell you guys before we get started that the directors that uh, came last time are unable to make it today. They were going to, ah. and then they had something they had to do. But we came up with a cool idea. So uh, we're going to figure out maybe at the end, or, or we'll set up an email or something, where you guys can submit questions. And I'm going to forward that to the directors, right? And then they're going to answer them on their Instagram for you guys. And then we'll do something like that. And then we'll also plan a, a big future. Of that. That's a cool idea. Yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, all right. So let's get started. Um, so I've been I've been uh, trying to figure this thing out. To um, uh, I got to mute you guys. So we're going to mute everybody. And then what we'll do is I'll go through and answer some of these questions, and uh, we'll just try to go through. And hopefully. Uh, I'm getting to people that didn't get their questions answered the first time. Um, and uh, I'm actually trying to figure this thing out. Sorry, guys. Oh, there we go. All right. So are we all ready? Yep. Yep. Okay. Bear with me. All right. So let's take a look at some of these questions you guys started on. And uh, here we go. We'll go back to the top, and it keeps going out of my hand. Sorry, guys. I don't have my assistant this morning, so I'm doing it myself. Uh, okay. Okay. So we have one. From, uh, this is from Raidmaster. Uh, I think I answered a question from Raidmaster last time, but let's just go ahead here. Uh, who, in terms of composers, were your biggest influences? Oh, well, obviously, guys, it's going to be uh, um, John Williams. Is a huge, huge, huge influence on me, obviously. Um, but then also, like, Alan Silvestri is a big one, too. So if you guys know Alan Silvestri, when I was seven years old, I was seven or eight years old when uh, I saw Back to the Future in the movie theaters. And that, for me, was, like, that sort of, like, turned the light on, as it were. And then, uh, and then also Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman's Batman was... Uh, Danny Elfman's Batman was a key one for me. And I saw that when I was, I must've been 10 years old when that came out. And uh, that one just like blew my mind open. And then of course, uh, you know, and I've always been a big fan of Elfman as well, like for Beetlejuice and, um, you know, I love like, I love like early nineties Elfman. I'm a huge fan. So, <laughs> um, so that would, that's, that, those are definitely my influences, but I also have a lot of influences that, that, you know, Michael Nyman, who's a very, um, not many people know him, but he's like a, a modernist, uh, you know, minimalist composer. Um, even Max Richter, who's a, a really awesome right now. He's a, he's a modernist composer as well. So I, I love a lot of people, but those, those other guys, Alan Silvestri, John Williams, Danny Elfman are probably like the, that trio are probably the guys that sort of raised me to be a composer without them knowing it. <laughs> That's probably what that is. All right, let's check out the, I'm going to the next one, guys. Here we go. What are your first impressions of Bionicle? Uh, was it when you got the gig for composing or before to the uninitiated? I feel like it's a weird thing to try to get your head around. Interesting. Um, I, I didn't see who that was, but sorry. So to answer that question is um, no, I actually had never even heard of Bionicle before them, before the movies. Um, I went in for a meeting and they literally showed me drawings and like diagrams and stuff and tried to explain it to me. <laughs> and I was asking questions like, so are they organic or are they cyber? Like well, I was trying to actually pinpoint what they are. And they said, they're not really either thing necessarily. They're sort of both things. Um, and it just takes on its own universe. And I sort of, I sort of just grew to sort of, the way they really explained it to me was by not, they kind of probably went further than they would with you guys where you guys sort of, you guys were probably part of like sort of building what Bionicle was as far as like mythology or the lore or whatever else. Right. So when I came along, the way they were explaining it to me was by immediately comparing it to like Pacific Islander um, uh, uh, civilizations. So if you notice, especially in mask of light, we sort of ended up abandoning that a little bit, but if you guys noticed in mask of light, 
that um, there's a lot of like, uh, like in during the Coley match and stuff, there's a lot of like Pacific Islander, you know, um, like bamboos and drums and stuff like this, the clacking and all that kind of stuff. That's very, very reminiscent of that sort of, um, uh, I forget, I forget what it's called, but it's sort of, that sort of type of dancing that, you know, was in Hawaii, but also in, in that whole region, Pacific Islands. So um, that's how it was explained to me. And that's how I actually caught on to it. It was like building the hierarchy and then the concept of like kings and, and you know, how that they worked in the civilization, but then also their gods and their, their angry gods and, their, you know, that kind of stuff. And that, and then I adapted the concept of Makuta and uh, Matsunui based off of that. And that helped me piece it together. So that's how, uh, that was how I learned about Bionicle initially. So, um, Oh, the thing doesn't stay where I wanted it to. Okay. Uh, so we got two questions from Isaac Muir. And I think you guys are, are able to unmute yourselves. So if your question comes up and you have, uh, and you want to back and forth with me, that's fine. So Isaac um, Muir, if you have a follow-up question, let me know. All right. So we got many composers borrow from cultural sources. Well, we, we sort of just went over that. Uh, when creating scores for science fiction and fantasy around culturals, cor cor cultures within those worlds. Were there any cultures you remember borrowing from? Yes, the Pacific Islander stuff, 100%. Um, and then do you have any recommendations for how to get into the industry of film scoring and how did you personally get into it? Right, so this is actually, I think I went over this uh, in the last session, I'll do it really quickly here was um, I had been working on uh, some TV movies and a couple of cartoon series, and then things kind of slowed down. And I went to go see my dentist who I was in, when I scored the first Bionicle, I was 24. And I was still seeing, because I was too lazy, I was still seeing my childhood dentist. And my childhood dentist, uh, his brother, uh, was a sound effects post-production supervisor who had mentioned that they were looking for a composer right now for this series called Bionicle. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So I, you know, I was connected with them and I met with them and I uh, showed them some music and that was it. And uh, that's how, that's how I got the job of, uh, for Bionicle. How I got into film scoring is in general was I just wanted to do it ever since I was like 12. And so I always worked towards that. Uh, sometimes skipping school to uh, <laughs> to go home and just and just write music and and work in the studio, and uh, so that was it. And then you just you know I live in Los Angeles anyway, and so you just bang on every door you can, and that's how I got started. Was just being the nineteen year old with some skills who won't go away. That's <laughs> that's how that's how I got my start in film composing. Uh, what is my favorite piece from my own catalog, Bionicle or otherwise? That's from Eric Hicks. Uh, okay, that's a good question, man. The Bionicle stuff is some of my favorite, uh, just from a theme. Um, from a theme standpoint, it's, it's some of my favorite stuff. Um, I'm trying to think. But, you know... I'm pretty proud of, of uh, some of the music I've done in like Act of Valor. And then also uh, I'm pretty proud of my themes and Need for Speed too. And that's also the biggest scale I ever got to work on uh, to date. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, but Bionicle is probably some of my, uh, from, from as far as a theme writing standpoint, is some of my favorite stuff personally. So um, Bionicle is your favorite. You said before the, the Leecon theme, right? Is, is your favorite of the Bionicle stuff? The, the, the dun, dun, yes, dun, dun. Uh, da, na, na, na. Uh, no, no, that's not the Lee Kong thing. Oh, you know the Lee Kong thing, probably better than I do. Yeah, I got yeah. this on my head. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite. That's probably one of my favorite themes because, because I think it's a really beautiful theme and it's kind of an underdog. It's, it's not, you know, when you think of Bionicle, it's not the thing you think of. There's, um, there's one one other piece I had a question about. Um, Please. Do you guys, do you hear this? <laughs> yeah, the friendship theme, yeah. I had to, okay, so I reverse engineered that. Tell me if I got it right. From what I could tell, it starts on the C and then it does like an F, G, back to C. And then it comes back down to an A minor, 
F G. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, it's pretty. Fa- yeah, it, it, it. Yeah, it sounds. That sounds probably right. I'd have to figure it out myself after however many years. But uh, that sounds probably right. It's it's pretty straight ahead, sort of. Uh, you know what we would call pop chords. You know, but yeah. then how you'll actually hear it in the score is you'll have those like nice, clean sounding, warm yeah. chords. But then there's a rub somewhere, or one of the instruments is holding over a note from the previous chord longer than mm. everybody else to create a rub for a second before it then settles out. Um, so a lot of stuff like that, but yeah, that sounds like the, no, 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 no. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds right. It's yeah. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. So <laughs> Bionica, Bionic Italia, Bion- Bionicle Italia. All right. That's the guy that's, uh, that's who's up next. I don't know why I thought of Nutella and then I know I just want to tell it. Um, okay. So you're asking, do you know cryo shells? Do you think your styles should come together for a Bionicle theme collaboration? I do not know what cryo shells are. It was an alt rock band oh, that cryo- worked with the franchise. Uh, yeah. Cryo shell was an alt rock band that could kind of work with the franchise like later in its life, kind of after you did the films. So they oh. were kind of like a de- part of a de- their definitive sound for a little while, from like 2007 to nine. I'll have you check them out. I don't know them. Uh, what's, the, what's the vibe? They made music for like Matrix. It's like what, it's what, like what? Evanescence, but better. As, yeah, yeah, my like my Evanescence, friends would put better. my my friends would put it Evanescence. simply as uh, Tame Lincoln Park. <laughs> pretty great so yes they are link bionicle linkin park the bionicle linkin park so that's like closer to like a slipknot kind of a thing maybe or something like that maybe not, sure. not that you harsh guys, you guys know who that slipknot, is but oh, not as harsh uh, as yeah um i consider them baby linkin park actually so that's interesting <laughs> uh all right so uh what impact has been what oh, what impact has being a part of Bionicle uh, had on your life. Um, honestly, it's you guys. Uh, it's been one of the coolest experiences to like, because in most most of my other work, you know, I've done a lot of like TV series and like TV movies and stuff. And most people, you know, watch them and and you might you might read a review or hear something and people say something kind of cool or something, and then it goes away and you do the next thing, right? That's just how it works. Um, and even with the bigger movies that I've done, like Act of Dollar and Need for Speed, the stuff that was like bigger budget in the theaters kind of stuff, um, it's that kind of a thing. It's, it's interesting to everyone for X amount of months, and then it kind of goes away. And that's just, it is what it is. And you move on to the next, whatever the next, what's the next thing, right? Um, but with the biotical stuff, it's just lasted, like here we are 20 years later almost. We're coming up on it in a couple of years. And it's like, it's had this stay in this life sort of, you know, this breath of life that sort of stayed with it this whole time that I can't even really explain. Like, I don't, like, I, I understand it, but I can't explain why, you know, this just took on this life and a couple other things just don't. It's just, it's just one of those things. It's lightning in a bottle. It just happens. And when it happens, it's a really, really cool thing. And, I know that I'm grateful to all of you guys, but just in general, I'm just grateful to even have had that experience because I know many guys in this industry, successful guys that won't have that experience, right? Because they just don't, because they're working on movies that or projects that are cool and they're great. And then you go on to the next thing and everybody moves on. But this is, this is different. It's such a cool thing. So I'm really grateful to you guys. So that's, that's, that's the biggest effect it's had on me. Um, so now I'm moving on to Markle. Any particular reason why you and others behind the movies are doing, oh, you know what? I should check to see, make sure uh, nobody's waiting because it doesn't show me that. Waiting. All right. Stand by. Man, I hate running this thing by myself. All right. <laughs> okay. Let me get back to it, guys. Sorry about that. Let's go back to the chat screen. And now I got to scroll back up to where I was. All right. So, all right. So we're on Markle. Any particular reason why you and others behind the movies are doing all these communities events now? Are these Zoom events, Creative Keepers interviews with you? Any reason for doing all this in 2021 in particular? 
I can only say that for me, I, I think Creative Capers was actually inspired by me, frankly, because I think it's one of those things where they're getting, they get a lot of the, the, the emails too. And they're just going like, uh, you know, and I, and I was doing that too. I was like, well, I, I mean, I'll re, I'll, I would return emails and say, thank you for listening and think you guys like it, but it's not much you can do beyond that, right? The movies are done. But again, it's that same thing. The fans are so, like, you guys just won't stop. Like, <laughs> you, know, like you guys want the stuff you guys want to talk about Bionicle, you want to hear about Bionicle. And it's like, okay, well then let's figure out how to do that. Like, so honestly, that's an honest, and I think it's a combination of that. And then in 2020, the, the film industry shut down, right? So nothing's going on. So we're all taking our little vacations and the emails for this kind of stuff just don't stop. And in the past, it's always been, in the past, it's always been like, man, I'd love to do something, but you know, I got these deadlines and I got this thing going on. I got, well, 2020, nothing's going on. So now if, if the fans are reaching out and you're doing nothing about it and it's 2020, you have no excuse anyway, what you're gonna do is, instead of catching what TV reruns or something, right? It's like, well, I'd be a real jerk if I just kept ignoring the fans. And now I don't even have an excuse to ignore the fans, right? Like you just, like, I don't have anything going on and it, well, all right, well, let's do it then, right? So that's why 2021. Um, and I will say that I know that, I know that the Creative Capers team and I uh, agree that it's just, it's surprising to me that, um, you know, with or without the original team that, that uh, Lego hasn't done more with the Bionicle stuff. It surprises me. Um, so, I mean, you know, I would, I would be thrilled to see that happen, but you know, I, I don't know. We don't know anybody over there, not the same team. So we'll just see, uh, we'll see where they, uh, where they uh, go with it. But, but in the meantime, we're going to take care of all this content. Um no, we're good. I was just checking again to see if anybody wanted to come in. All right, so let me go back up to uh, find where we left off. From Voximo. All right, uh, Bionicle as a whole definitely ended up abandoning it. <laughs> yeah, they sort of seem to. I, I, and I'm sure they have a strategy, and I'm sure they have a great reason. It's just, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, and I respect that, as is true with most uh, companies, especially in entertainment. We, uh, and, and on this one, I'm with you guys. I'm on the outside looking in. I don't know what their thinking is in there. And all we can see is we're looking through a keyhole, right? And when you're looking through a keyhole, the choice doesn't make that much sense. But obviously on the other side of that door, you know, they have a plan. They're doing their own thing. Um, so it is what it is. All right. So from Charles, Charles, I don't want to, I don't want to screw up this last name, but hopefully you know who you are. Uh, when you learned that Lee Khan from Bionicle 2 was set to die, when did you learn? When I got the footage, I swear to you. Uh, they were actually, even then, they were pretty paranoid about um, stuff coming out. Uh, funny enough, uh, this will tell you how old it is. Uh, around this time is when work copies of video started transitioning from being delivered on like a tape to being sent via like FTP or a server site hey, you can download the third act now, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is, cause this is like what, 2004 or something. So with that came a lot of like paranoia that wasn't necessarily necessary. But so, so with that, I didn't get to know much of the story when we started doing that because, because it was like, oh, we're sending this digitally and putting up on a server. It could be spread everywhere. Oh God, what are we going to do? You know, if that happens. So they were very tight on it. Like I had to down, I, I was only, you know, I was given a, an FTP link. Um, that's what servers used to be called for those of you who don't know. Um, before you just had clouds, you had to basically be your own cloud and you would host an FTP server and send somebody else a link and then they would download. Anyway, um, so yeah, it was all kept pretty tight. So I learned about LeeCon and the story as I got it. And I was like, oh, I was literally like setting them up so, I, so my theme is actually setting him up to almost succeed in a way and that he's not going to, which is actually ended up being what the directors were doing to me on purpose. So just like, just like what they do to actors, you know, sometimes where you'll hear about how they'll pull an actor aside and sort of mess with their head a little bit to like get them to do something in a scene. They'll do the same thing to composers sometimes. So um, 
they did that to me. They, they, they sort of set me up uh, a certain way and then he died and they were like, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> sort of like, and I was like, okay, that's cool. And then that's, it actually really is great. And then, um, you know, the leak on theme really works as that uh, sort of uh, sadness uh, thing as well. Uh, I noticed the, I don't even know, Desiree, it was mused, musical throughout the latter the half of the movie. The DSE what Ray uh, Def Chant. Like, uh, bum, 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 bum. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, like, during the uh, fight with Makuta and Bakama, it does, the, it does that uh, sting. Like, oh, the, the DSE Ray, DSE Ray. Oh, I see. I I was I was so confused on what you're talking about. Sorry, guys. I'm letting other people in here. Yeah. Okay. Um. No. Uh. That's not a direct reference, at least that I was aware of. Um. But um. What was your? You were just saying you read. You noticed it. I'm getting back to your question. Uh. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I assume it came. Uh, 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 no, no, it di it didn't come on early on at all. Uh, you know, again, it was I, I was I was faced with it, and um, you know, I, I work fast. That's my. <laughs> that's like okay, we're gonna let's do it. And I, you know, I got some choir stuff together, and and uh, you know, it's also conversations. I would, you know, I get the tape, and they say watch it and call us, and I watch it and I call them. I was like, oh wow, what do you want to guys? What do you guys want to do? Um, and then we would also have table meetings too, where we have conversations about the arc and, and what it means. And, you know, as much as they were telling me at the time. Um, okay. So uh, we got one from Eric again. So there's a Sandra book for the animation case for all Bionicle. No, it's not the case for all Bionicle music. Oh, I should read it out loud. You said that much of the soundtrack was done before the animation. Is that the case for all Bionicle music? No, it is not. Uh, where the music came first and creative came animated to your music. No, they did not animate to my music at all. Um, it was absolutely classic in that um, they would send me, I would send themes as they were working and they would animate while listening to my music over and over and over again, like on a loop, but they were not going to picture, uh, like they were not cutting picture or running action uh, based off of my cues or my music, no. Um, but I was writing themes based off of the stories they were telling me. And also I was like, you know, this is what I keep hearing. What do you think? And then I would get a call four days later saying, so as we're animating this sequence in Bionicle 2, we just kept listening to the leak on theme sketch over and over and over again, which is also the same theme sketch that I think I included as like an extra on the Bionicle 2 soundtrack album. Um, I think I did. Did I, I don't know. Did I end up doing that? Does anybody know? Yeah. Yeah. You I did. don't know. You slot it on the end as the DVD menu in parentheses. That, that's right. Yeah. So that was actually, that was originally the sketch that the mm -hmm. animators were listening to over and over and over again as they were doing some of these scenes. So, so is, there, um, is there a bunch of like B-sides, hidden, unreleased uh, <laughs> stuff that you, you just like sketches you did that you scrapped for the, for the films? Uh, maybe. I mean, would they even exist now? Well, regardless of whether um, you have them, did you do them back then? Oh yeah, oh for sure. I don't know, but I don't think I still have them. But absolutely, I would do. I would do what you, you know, what I would call like sketches or or a sketchbook, where you either have. Um, well, back then, because I would get stuff in such pieces, it really would be just about the character or the theme or the or the or the threat. So this is my friendship theme. This is my Jala and uh, I forget the other character's name theme. Uh, for you know the da na na da 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 na na da da na na da na na you know that theme, and that would just be that theme, and then send that to them, and this theme, and then send that to them. But then sometimes I think we did a little bit of this into into Bionicle Three. Uh, sorry if you guys can hear the. Uh, I decided to sit outside today, and I have a, a woodpecker on this tree here <laughs> that just keeps going. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, Oh, that's a so, woodpecker. Uh, that's, cool. that's a woodpecker. Yeah, every morning he's out here on these trees I have on the side here. Um, so, um, yeah. Oh, so for so for Bionicle three, we did do more of a like a sketchbook where I would really write. I would 
take all these themes and sort of thread them and sort of turn in like one five minute piece of music. And this five minute piece of music essentially is the overture of the score, right? You know, this is kind of what I'm thinking, you know, and then you also then sub out different themes too. You know, this is, this is my Rudaka theme. Um, I don't know. Somebody's leaving. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't think I included it on Bionicle three, but I do have a Rudaka theme or did I, I don't know. I do have a Rudaka theme that was completely thrown out. We abandoned it. You did include it. it. This, you included it. I did this, include it. Th- yeah, you did. With like the violin, it's like a mm-hmm. just like this yeah. sort of like uh, very yeah. French. Yeah, you ended it as like the last track. The same way you did the, yep. Yeah, you ended yeah, it, yeah. the album with that the same way you did with the leak on sketch. There you go. So that so yeah. So honestly, so that so then there's there's really nothing. There's no that's those are the main nooks and crannies because I knew you guys would probably want it. So that's why I put it out there. So um, everything else is is pretty much and in the movie in the movies. Um, all right, so a pinch of basil, or basil, or I don't know how you pronounce it. I like pinch I of basil. basil. That's pretty great. All right, so all right, talked about the force theme last time, but the oh yeah right. Uh, but the funny thing about it is that this is that it was originally not meant to be the force theme. Originally, it was an Obi Wan called to adventure motif. Oh uh, okay. Uh, well, the connection of the force was being developed by the Empire. Are you subject to something like that for the trilogy? Yes. Uh, starting with one association for the theme and changing into the second. Yes. Okay. This is just like the theme I have in mind. Okay. All right. So pinch base will be raised. Right. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so you're asking if if any of my original themes uh, started out as one concept and ended up becoming another. Uh, another one from Star Wars is also, yeah, that Empire theme, which ended up becoming more of a. Darth Vader theme, right? Uh, but it was originally it was originally just supposed to be for the Empire. Um, yes, I would say. Uh, well, actually, yeah, that 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 which you guys are calling the Force theme uh, uh, for Bionicle was really um, that was originally supposed to mostly be about the journey of uh, the Mask of Light. And then I, about halfway through scoring, I realized that was more of the world's theme and the overarching saga's theme and that, that other sort of smaller theme um, of uh, the da na 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 da da na ya na 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 da na 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 That was the Mask of Light theme. But I, I kind of stumbled upon that. Because uh, re- that originally, originally was just sort of a variation of the main theme that I was trying to sort of noodle around because I was trying to do this thing where, you know, I would hint at the Mask of Light theme and then you would only hear it in the very end and that would be the thing. And then I was realizing that it just wasn't pacing right with the movie. It made more sense that this theme is bionicle and then that smaller motif is for the Mask of Light and sort of the the coming of that of that. Um, and then the second part of your question, uh, was that, oh, by the way, while we're here, uh, Pinch of Basil, did you have, a, did, you, what, did you want to mention what your specific theme was? Oh, yeah. Like the one I had in mind was this little cue that you wrote for the, uh, Coley match at the beginning of Master of Light that you brought back at the end of the movie when he's facing off with Makuta and then you bring it back again at the end of Bionicle 2. Like it was a sort of a something like that. But I was like, I thought yeah, it was like my, a cute little reference over and over, kind of building off its meaning. So I was curious how, um, you know, purposeful that was. Uh, uh, not. Uh, but you know, it's one of those things. Like they're they're not they're not connected directly. Like like I'm not um, I'm not threading something specific in that. Uh, that's more about just like it were it, you know it's a it's a it's a little sort of John Williams esque homage that I'm doing there, right? And it worked so well and was so effective in that moment that it, it's one of those things, it becomes sort of the signature of what we're doing. So then in a like moment, for, as far as energy or tension or whatever, you know, we can, we can you know, I'll bring some of that same material back. Um, but I would have to, in the Coley match, huh? 
in, in Bionicle 2 Coley match or the first Coley match? I don't match? know. Like, well, it's like, yeah, the first one in Mask of Light, you used it for that Coley match. Then you brought it back at the end of the film when Makuta and Takanuva are facing off of each other in another Coley match. And then you also oh. used it again at the end of Bionicle 2 when Vakama is fighting uh, Makuta. Oh, so oh I'm sorry. I, mis- I misunderstood moments. you. Like I said, the coffee is still entering my veins right now. <laughs> um, then that was intentional 100%. Yes, because I, I didn't understand what you were saying. Yes, uh, uh, at the very least, if memory serves, at the very least, it would have been my intention within Mask of Light and then Bionicle 2, chances are it would have been one of the directors saying, hey, you know what would be cool is if that thing you did in the first one for the Coley match when they were fight when they were going up against each other, bring that back. And then I go, oh, okay. That's probably what happened for sure. Um, let me I'm catch Oh, your second question. You mentioned you never had a full orchestra when working on the trilogy. No, I did not. But from the sound of things, you definitely got to expand those resources when you moved to bigger films like Active Valor, Waiting for Lightning and Need for Speed. I did. Correct. Uh, did that ever change how you wrote your music? No, actually, it didn't. Uh, and and if you had those resources when you wrote the trilogy, do you think it would have changed how you approached the film? No, absolutely not. Um, which I'm really proud of. Uh, and I don't know if that's misguided to be proud of that or not. But I'm proud of the fact that um, I wrote the Bionicle music in a vacuum, in a creative vacuum. In other words, the Bionicle music is exactly what I wanted it to be. And it's not, I didn't change it based off of the resources I had available to me. So, whereas in other movies, sometimes you do do that, you have to. But in Bionicle, I was lucky enough to, one, it's not going into theaters, right? So the flaws of it not being a multi-million dollar 90 piece live orchestra aren't going to be so easily exposed because it's not going to be, it wouldn't have been in the movie theater. So that's a good start there. Um, and I had the encouragement of the, of the whole filmmaking crew to go that big in the first place. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I would, uh, the only difference would be that if I had those resources and the Bionicle stuff, I think it would just sound, it would sound better. It would sound cooler. It would sound more expensive. It would, it would sound like Star Wars basically if we had those kind of resources. Um, so, you know, would have been awesome, but it doesn't change how I would have written it at all, for sure. Um, and I definitely got more resources as time went on, partially due to budget and being, you know, trusted more to, you know, having more of those kind of resources. And the other part is also technology, where you can do more with little, which advanced a lot in the early 2000s. You know, so we're doing the Bionicle movies where I was definitely pushing the envelope on that tech stuff because I had a you know I mean I had I had some pretty like pretty big guys like talking to me about like how are you doing that because it was a very sort of new thing right um but then you know by the time you start getting into like you know 2010 2011 you know by the time you start getting into there the 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 technology and the ability to to uh have a fully functioning studio at home without the need to really go to a, a a hardcore studio at any skyrocketed in that time so that also helped with the the quality as well like so for active valor i was not in a room with a 90 piece orchestra on that score either i had live i had a live orchestra in two different locations um you know so it was done on a somewhat of a budget uh but you know by the time active valor comes out in 2012 the ability to do that uh is possible to, uh, for technology the other movies I had the budget to, to, to go old school and go big and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's just keep going here. Bionica, Bionicle Italia. I always wanted to say Bionica. Uh, Bionicle Italia. Uh, perhaps this is not the right question for you, but in your experience, how much Lego influenced in the making of the film plot, music, and direction? Obviously, if you know something about it. Uh, Lego directly had had very little influence actually it was mostly bob thompson at lego uh who was working at lego but his whole thing was bionicle so he wasn't doing a like he wasn't a lego person he was somebody hired by lego to create bionicle and then bob thompson worked with the filmmakers and myself and we sort of found the sound the idea the movie the plot all that kind of stuff um interesting, when I say interesting. We, thank you yeah yeah for sure uh, um you know, obviously, when you start talking about plot and, and that kind of stuff, uh, like story, I have, I, you know, I, I only know 
I only know what I know peripherally, you know, from what people are telling me because I didn't have anything to do with the story itself. So um, I know that the filmmakers came up with some of it. I know a lot of it. I think all of it, or if not most of it, is Bob, um, who's a brilliant mind. Um, <laughs> I haven't spoken to that guy in a long time. I should check him. Uh, but uh, but yeah. So as far as the Lego itself, I'm I'm unsure how much they they were involved um, in in that kind of stuff. Um, so Raid Master. Uh, I'm going to vouch to Tommy H. Raidmaster, if you don't mind, just because it's a, that looks like a new name, and I, I want to make sure new names get, get questions in. At what point did you realize that the films in the franchise had a worldwide following when it came out? Uh, what's, it been like, uh, what's it been like seeing the fan base last with people this long? Yeah, Tommy, crazy, man. Uh, it, like, I, like I've been saying before, I, I, I'm so thrilled to even be a part of that and to witness it. It's crazy to me uh and the in the best way possible that you guys have just kept this thing alive it's awesome i mean that's honestly the difference between ideas that just go away and ideas that can grow and turn into something super cool because that's, at the end of the day and like and that's true now uh, by you know with bionicle it's like i'm talking about the brainchild of bionicle being bob thompson or the filmmakers or whatever but it's really not anymore right because of what it's become it, it doesn't belong to anybody anymore. <laughs> like nobody can take credit for it. It's now belongs to everyone. So um, I would say not dissimilar to like a Star Wars. Uh, obviously Disney would disagree. They'd say they own it, which they do. But, um, you know, it takes on a world. It takes on a life of its own. So it's an amazing thing. So now I'll go back, back to Raidmaster. Did you find any similarities between Bionicle and Christmas Vacation too? <laughs> what a great question. Uh, no. No, I didn't. Uh, but uh, not not a, not a comparison I would have anticipated. But I, I like uh, I like I like connecting those dots. Uh, but no, no, there's no similarities that I'm aware of beyond how I write. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure there's something in there that uh, of, uh, that you know that that sounds like the other because that's just I write a lot like that, especially at that time around 2003. I was very um, I was very into a certain way of uh, writing for orchestra and and, and expanding. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to go to Valentine. Pa is it Pogan Paul? Pogan Paul? Do I have that right? Yes. Oh, hey, hey, Valentine, how are you? Uh, yeah, basically. Okay, so, yeah. All right, right on. Uh, so now you've already sort of, uh, they asked a question there, but uh, while not a musical expert, I think the tracks for Bionicle movies were really diligently and intricately made for something that never truly came to the big screen. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, would you say you really poured your heart into it or did the ideas for these melodies just sort of come to you naturally? Both. Um, I believe it's Stravinsky who said that, you know, sometimes he feels like he's not writing music. He feels like he's sitting at a, desk and just waiting for radio transmissions um and it absolutely feels like that i um have sat at the piano banging my skull against it for a week wouldn't have come up with the theme and then i just do this thing where it's like i'm gonna make a thing of coffee and i'm gonna sit at this piano and i'm not allowed to get, i'm not allowed to get up to pee unless i write something really brilliant right now <laughs> because i gotta show somebody something in like two days and i've got nothing right now right and that could totally be happening. And then you sit there and then suddenly you're sitting there like this and like playing chopsticks. I'm not joking, playing chopsticks like this. And then suddenly that turns into something else. And then before you know it, it's like, holy cow, I think I just came up with something. And then, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, at the time I had like a mini recorder back in 2004, but now it would be my phone, you know, just the voice memo on the iPhone. Um, and just hit record and then play the thing you just played again on the piano. That's it. You know, cause that's faster than even writing it down. And now I have it and then I can expand upon that or, or, and I may even then, I may even then go take a shower or walk the dog or something and literally listen to that recording of my cell phone over again. And then I just listen to what's missing because something's going to be missing. Right. So I'll listen to it. It's like, Oh, I should have done, I should have done this instead and then when i'm done with whatever it is i'll go back home get in front of the piano fix it record it again 
and I'll do that for as as long as I'm as the deadline allows. Um, uh, so hopefully uh, that that answers uh, Valentine's question. So uh, yes. all right, so I see one right on. So then uh, I see I see you uh, a one from Isaac, but I also see from Bo. Um, let me. Uh, oh wait, please drop a link in the chat. I'd love to hear it. I don't know. Who, oh, at Isaac. That's something else. Great. Sorry. Uh, right on. Right on. Uh, okay. We got HB Mox. Uh, hopefully, I'm saying that right. Mox. Mox. Uh, when was the moment? Right on. Uh, when was the moment you realized how large and passionate the Uncle community was? Um, about a month ago. <laughs> like, like I say, you know, like uh, because it's like because that question is only good. That that question is a new question by the day, right? Because if you asked me yesterday, I would have said, you know what I mean? Like, because every day it's like, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, holy cow. No, they're, they're really passionate about Bionicle. And then a month later, it's like, oh, oh no, 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 no. No, they're super passionate about Bionicle, right? So, uh, but like, so, you know, I knew, I knew that there was a massive passionate fan base that was, that was, that was super into Bionicle by, you know, by the, by the time we're doing a second and third one. Did I realize how passionate? No. How passionate I realized a few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, or whatever it is, right? Because, and that's that's what it is. And uh, but uh, I love every second of it. Um, this thing keeps moving. All right, uh, all right. So now Ethan Woodcox sounds like a character from like a comic book or something. Uh, that's a cool name. Uh, I like it. All right, uh, a, a bit of a personal question. After the last meetup, I started following your wife Cassie on Instagram. Oh, Cassiel is, is her uh, is her stage name. Yes. Did she get into scoring films from seeing you do it? <laughs> uh, or has she always been a passion of hers? Um, I don't know how long a uh, scoring film has been a passion of my wife, but I know it predates me. Um, we actually met uh, because she had heard a score of mine m uh, many years ago and uh, and reached out and we were talking uh, over time, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. One thing leads to another. But um I know that she has, uh, I know that she's been bitten by the bug for sure. And she's very talented. So you'll be seeing a lot more of her for sure. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to um, say that I, um, I did notice that she was posting a lot more stuff and listening to it and it's, it's really good. And I, oh, um, thanks. Yeah, I'll tell her. And so I was just curious if that had, if you had much of an influence on that or if you had met in that way. So I'm glad that you covered that too, that you kind of met through that little outlet. Yeah, I mean, I think I've had an influence on her in some aspects, but I wouldn't say that it's on the creative sound, like the like how it sounds is has nothing to do with me. That's except for except for you know I showed her, I showed her how to pull up that, <laughs> how to, you know, and you just do this and then play with that, and then I walk away and I come back and there's this crazy synth thing she's done, you know. That's cool. Um, that's her gig, man. You know, it's it's pretty cool. So, awesome. yeah, you'll be seeing more. She's doing a Lifetime movie right now. Oh. Um, yeah. So, all right. So, so Vox Sumo, that was in regards to the, okay, that's something else. Peter, uh, has, uh, has the way you compose music changed since the Bionicle films with any new technology and tools for sure? Uh, or is the creative process pretty much the same? Also, I wanted to say that I was inspired by music score to, to my own stop motion animation. Right on, man. Uh, thanks for being so generous in your time. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, Thank you guys again for being such uh, psychotic fans. Now uh, it's awesome. I love it. Um, so yeah, my 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 generosity with my time is nothing more than a thank you for you guys uh, loving the stuff so much. Um, and and has the way I compose changed? Not actually. Now that I think about it, not really. It's actually fundamentally still ex pretty much exactly the same. The only thing that's changed is how many steps it takes to get to that result. That's it. So when I would have done the vinyl girl stuff, there was pretty much no way to really, uh, like you can write and put piece things together in your own home studio computer. But at the end of the day, it really sort of had to be like taken out of that environment and brought into a studio for at least a polish and some sort of version of that. Um, now you can definitely do everything just in-house, but, but the step, you know, what you're doing is basically the same. Um, you know, I have, I'm in my computer, it has, you know, a thousand tracks in it. 
you know, and load it up with everything I could want. I press a, you know, whether it's a, a solo violin or a rare, you know, hang drum from a remote part of wherever, you, you know, it's already in the template. I could just click and start playing it. Um, and then, and then depending on what the budget is or what the constraints are, or what artistically wants to, what, you know, what you want to do, uh, I can then replace some of that with live players. Um, now, a lot of times it's a phone call. So if I'm going to, if I need a guitar part, I can call my guitar guy. I send him an MP3. He sends me back the guitar track. So I load it up and I can mix it right in and we're just off to the races. Um, you don't always have to be there. Um, but other than that, I mean, you know, the core concept is, is pretty largely the same. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to Marcin or Mar is it Marcin or Marcin? Uh, hi, it's, hi, hi, hi. Uh, it's actually Ma Marcin uh, because I, I'm from Marcin. Poland. Marcin, yes. Uh, see, I, 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 I knew it. It's, that's the thing is it's, you can't assume the dialect at all. Uh, well, Marcin, pleasure to meet you. Sorry, I butchered your name. Uh, so you're asking me, what are your thoughts of working with temp music? Uh, I, it, <laughs> Uh, from from what I understand, it's a practice where composers get sent movie footage with music. Yes, this is true. From another movie, and are told to compose something similar. Yes, this happens all the time. It, it did not happen with the Bionicle movies. Uh, we knew what kind of world we want to create, and when we were, we absolutely were talking about Star Wars and the concept of that scale of music and with the themes and how operatic it is, some of these kind of things. Um, but other than that kind of a conversation, there was no temp music for those things. But it's it's very it was it was relatively common there then and very common now uh, that pretty much anything you're going to get is going to have temp music um, without a doubt. Uh, the only exception is long relationships, like some directors I've worked with over and over and over again. So I'm getting again I'm getting involved, you know, either before they've even started filming, or I'm getting involved you know, just as they're trying to edit. So I can, I'm sending sketches and themes and stuff. But then again, you know, it's still temp music because they're taking my themes and my ideas and putting them in as temp music. And while that's way better, of course, because they're, they're themes that are going to be for that movie, you know, sometimes they're being dropped in a place that I wouldn't have thought that should belong there. But if the director loves it. So in that case, that's a way temp music can be a very positive thing. It can be a great way for the director to communicate. But then it can also sort of box you in as far as like, you know, what your approach is going to be, you know? Uh, but yes, uh, temp music is very similar. Um, I'm trying to give a, 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 a harmless example. Let me see. Uh, so if I was doing a movie that was like a very character driven thing, not action, not sci-fi, but just very like almost slice of life, like these TV movies I, I would do in the 2000s. Every single TV movie came in with the score to American Beauty tempt in it. Every single one. <laughs> for so for about eight years, I only heard the score to American Beauty for for every time I got one of these movies, because they would just every editor loved it. Every editor wanted to cut it in. Um and it happens, you know. Uh, and then you just you what you do is you evoke the 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 ninja composer, uh, which I try to fancy myself as sometimes, is is you is you don't ignore that note. You take on the energy, essence, and emotional uh, frequency of what the temp music is, but then change everything about it so that you're still taking, you're still creating that same energy that, that music has, but it's a completely different piece of music. Um, that's and that's the best way to to, to handle temp. Um, Thank right, you. So, uh, yeah, no worries. All right, so Totapia Nuvo, Nuva. Totopio Nuva. I'm going to go with that. Uh, all right. So I think Toa Tapio. What is I it? Toa Tapio. Oh, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was reading it wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, there are some tracks from Legends of Metro Nui that didn't make it into the soundtrack album. Is there a chance these tracks can be made available separately? Maybe. That's going to require some digging, but if I can if I can find them and suss out what those are, then sure, no problem. Um, that would that would take a hot minute, though. Um, yeah, that'll take a hot minute. Uh, but maybe uh, fast answers. I don't know. Um, 
All right. So again, uh, Isaac, how much of your work do you write for one project that doesn't make the cut for a soundtrack? Have you recycled for other projects? Zero. Uh, oh, in general, not for Bionicle. Uh, in general, uh, it's happened. It has happened, but it doesn't happen very often. Mostly because, honestly, for no other reason than just like a sort of a like a personal creative stubbornness. Uh, if I wrote something for one thing, and like I have a really hard time putting it into something else and feeling like that's correct. Um, the exception to that is if I've written a theme that I had to, you know, that nobody liked, it didn't work or was the wrong vibe or whatever else. I will, I definitely keep those things in like a folder because I don't want to throw out any of my ideas because, you know, it may not even be for another movie. Maybe if, maybe if I'm bored, I don't have anything else going on. I may, it may be just a theme I want to explore or play with. Um, but there have been a couple of times where it's like, oh man, this would be perfect. And usually those, those usually come about when something's come in and it's an emergency. Like, oh, we have a whole movie and we need you to write 80 minutes of music and could you do it in 14 days? You know, <laughs> those, and it happened, it's happened. So those kind of things is usually where, okay, I need to do this super fast, but I want, the, I want it to be as good as it can be. So instead of writing some sort of half quality theme to just get through this project, let me tap into, is there anything here that feels good? But, and I'll usually find something and I'll still end up making one or two adjustments, but then that, that can be a jumping off point for sure. But, but it's very rare that I do that. Cause usually if I have the time to not do that, I would prefer not to. So a then follow -up um, question for that actually. Um, sure. Would you ever consider releasing an album of all of your unused stuff under your personal guise as just like a, a, a personal piece? You know, uh, I hadn't considered that, uh, but I mean, maybe never say never. I mean, if, if there's a market for it, if people are interested in it, then sure. Um, there you go. Um, yeah. I mean, for sure. If there's some ideas that, uh, you know, uh, that, that I think are, that I think are good. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure in that folder are one or two ideas where if I listen to it, it's like, yeah, there's a reason why I didn't use that thing, you know, like, <laughs> but if, if I listen to something and I like it and, uh, and it's not for anything else and absolutely I might repackage them and do like a solo album thing. Um, uh, a Nathan first library as it were. Uh, yeah, why not? For sure. That's a, it's a good idea. Thanks for that. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely see if that's even a thing. Um, all right. So from Markle, what are your thoughts on the fourth movie, Legend Reborn? Yeah. Have you seen it? Did you understand how it connected to the rest of Bionicle story? I have not seen it. I have not watched it. I don't know what it is. You're I not don't missing know how much. it connects. <laughs> that's what, that's actually the reason why I haven't, that's, that's why I haven't watched it. Um, to be honest, um, is, um, you know, I, I had asked a, a few people and, and consistently I was told that it's it's uh, it's a bit of a phantom menace. So, uh, you know, it, 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 and that's kind of and so, you know, I saw Phantom Menace and I have had that experience. So I'm good. Um, yeah, if that makes any sense. Uh, is it does it is it something I should know or understand? I mean, it skips three years of the story because Web of Shadows was 2005 and this movie came out 2009. So it's pretty far disconnected from all of the other movies. Does the, well, yeah, yeah. But I mean, does it, does it, is it three years later within the world? It takes uh, place uh, on another planet, not on yeah. the yeah. movie. Uh, none of the, so None of the well, it ties to that year's respective uh, story. So, like, the story kept going from year to year, and when the movie came out, it was just kind of coinciding with the story for that year, which was trying yeah. to pull this sort of soft reboot idea on a different planet. It, it's it's a little complicated oh, to explain the whole thing, okay. but yeah, that's was the basic so it's, idea. It's more of a yeah, like it's more of like a serial universe thing. Yeah, kind of. it, bit, yeah. That, that year, uh, that year it did. Yeah, that was that was a few years after Bob had left the story team. And it was definitely left in the eyes of one person. And it was just Greg Farshti, which I'm sure that you probably collaborated with a little bit. But he... I don't think I know him. Okay. He he became the main story guy after Bob left in 05. And that's Actually, the when... Thing is, okay. That's God, when did, everyone just we, went poof, weird. Do we like it or do we not? Oh, okay. We don't like it. Okay. Well, 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 yeah, I, I like well, 
yes card. and no. Here's the thing is that pe- people kind of over- or exaggerate how much in- control he actually had. It was more like a marketing league kind of took over. So from year to mm. year, the focus got okay. a little more on like big themings. Like, oh, we're going to have one year if it's about like gangsters and punk stuff. And then another year is going to be about uh, underwater stuff. And every year is going to be sky stuff. So it was definitely a lot more theming to the toys, basically. Yeah. And then you get yeah. to... Uh, so- Making it more serial is what it sounds like, yeah. Definitely different. And then you get, and then you get to 2009 where they're trying to do a whole soft reboot to try and uh, turn things around because the sales have been in decline for a little while. So they're trying to do this whole post-apocalyptic thing and overhaul everything. Didn't work out for them, but no, yeah, they definitely got to a lot, a little less thematically coherent, I guess would be one way to put it. But no, yeah, Greg Farshi was just kind of a writer for hire if it just got more to do at the time. He was Right, never- right. He, he was like Good writing, or he was contributing on to some of the films you were working on. He wrote the story for a Bionicle 3, but yeah. Oh, he I was probably never met him. Probably, yeah. He was, a, I don't think he quite got as far into like the filmmaking process. You know, he passed his stuff off to yeah. a screenwriter. And then he did the, he did the books stuff. and comics. I see, I see. Okay, okay. So Fair he, was like, oh, okay. he was a different part of the multimedia stuff. Uh, uh, around the world, sure, sure. I think people. Okay, cool. I, I I think most of the curiosity of constantly asking about Bionicle Force is, uh, I guess, just seeing what your thoughts were about how a different composer mm-hmm. approached to music. Because yeah, he didn't really, you know, use any of your themes or stuff. He kind of took a different approach to it. So it's I, like, I, I, I haven't I haven't heard about it. it. Uh, I don't believe the soundtrack's released. Yeah, it's like at best. Um, the website Biomedia Project did a few, like a rip on the soundtrack. You know, few effects oh, still in there, but tried to edit it down as best they could. Uh, but right, yeah, yeah I, that's I know pretty that. much I know the only way you can listen to the tracks at this point. So it's not as good as your okay. music. Oh, but so you guys don't. I mean, well, you get why you guys are so kind. So thank you. <laughs> uh, but but is it? Uh, but do you, I mean, so is it? Is it the big orchestra thing? Is it? Is it like technically? It's the same is it theme repeated about twenty times. Oh, that's fair. More, it's it's quite a lot of repetition. Honestly, it kind of sound, the thing is, it's kind of working off of the same resources you probably were, you know, as far as like operating in samples, not really a full mm. orchestra. At least it didn't it's sound go- like it. There are it's trying to go for the same. For, yeah, it's trying to go for the same track, the same texture of uh, music. Yeah, for oh, a lot so, of the, music, so it, yeah. it is doing the it is doing the broad orchestra thing. Yeah, yeah, just you know, with okay. samples and stuff, and it's like there are a few times where like it goes a little harder on the techno aspect for like a few tracks to kind of take advantage sure. of. Oh, we don't have an orchestra, might as well go in the other direction. Then I guess you did, but that's about as far as the you know the separation goes. Other than that, it's mostly yeah, just the, the, the fact that they're not really playing with as many different themes as you did. It's just kind of yeah, the one theme they reuse over and over. It don't really play around with other ones feeding into it like you did, which is right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot less yeah, sophisticated. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. So. Oh well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I'm sure, you know, a lot of times with these kind of things, there's lots of stories behind. You know, you never know, right? You know, like that that cannot that could also not be the composer. That can be, you know, you know, a series of things that happen that result in whatever happens all the time. But uh, but that's a bummer. I mean, I would love to see it. Uh, you know, I. I <laughs> You know, I think uh, maybe Bionicle now, you know, what they need to do is uh, make it for uh, your guys' you know, generation or age group and just, just go the other way with it. Just go full Joker. Just like do it like a, like a, like a really dark, gritty reboot of Bionicle and, I don't know, give somebody, I don't know, some sort of Does it represent the or something. Brand? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, no, no, I know. It. I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. They did do a rap once. They did, they a, did a what? There was a rap. A rap. That sounds misguided. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, that's uh, definitely one way of putting it. It's it's yeah, just as sounds... cringy as you think it would be. We all still have that's, PTSD. That was my <laughs> first thought. I, I would normally refrain from making a comment, but that that combo I think uh, requires a a denouncement mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, for sure. Uh, all right, so let's let's oh. push on to Felix. Uh, how long did it take to compose the soundtrack for the film? I don't remember. Um. I think I did. There, I think on one of them, there was even a thing where I did like the the first section of it, and then and then I think I bounced to a different project, like a TV thing I was doing, because 
you know, animation hadn't come in yet or something. So it's hard to tell sometimes because sometimes I work on it for like a month and then do something else for like two weeks and then come back and work on Bionicle for another month. You know, that, that did happen in one or two instances. But in general, um, I think I did the whole thing um, in, a, in a maybe two, maybe two and a half months or so, something like that. Um, maybe three months. I, I don't, to be honest, I don't quite remember, but it would have been something around that. You just wake up in the morning and I go and it's like, okay, I have my schedule. I'm going to write two and a half minutes today, two and a half completed minutes today. You know, and some days I would hit that goal. Some days I would finish my day out and I would only have got about a minute in. I'm like, oh man. And then other days I would just be flying, you know, especially on some of the stuff where, you know, those moments where you can, where you can really just sort of like, you know, play with the theme and you don't have to, you don't have to change gears too much. And you can, re- and, you know, really blow it out. And it's like, I could get in those days, I would get four minutes done, you know? And so it all just depends, but it would take me about two to three months, I think, um, per movie when we did it. Um, oh, sorry to interrupt, but I got a message that someone's yeah. in the waiting room. I know you can't, you don't get notifications. Uh, yeah, I can't think, because I'm giving the chaps up. But no, no, I appreciate yeah. it. Let's, let's, I, I appreciate the, the group effort. It takes a village. So uh, stand by. The, the Bionicler. That's the uh, name of the horror film for Bionicle. <laughs> um, oh, and before I forget, by the way, I, I want to uh, uh, apologize and thank uh, the winners of the raffle for their patience. I was got I got hound swamped doing some other things. I have now signed those posters, and they are going out to the directors who have expressed uh, a lot of uh, happiness to sign them. And then they are going to be sent out pronto. Uh, so I apologize for that delay and it will be worth it. Also, I'm going to look at my phone before I forget. The director, uh, the directors wanted, uh, they, they were looking in their little treasure trove. Um, and again, they couldn't, they couldn't be here with us today. Um, but uh, they will pose their, que- you know, you guys can pose your questions to him, to them. Uh, but I'm looking for it. They showed me a production jacket that they're going to auction off, I think, on eBay or something. And they said, I can show it to you guys. Um, but I'm having difficulty finding it uh, in my email. One moment, guys. Got it. Okay. So I don't know if you guys, let me see if there's a better picture. Yeah, okay. So he found this uh, Mask of Light uh, production leather jacket that they're going to... Can you guys see that? Ooh, snazzy. That's Yo, on the back. Wow. Isn't that That's crazy? Cool. That's Isn't that freaking neat? Freaking amazing. Then, like, Very that, slick. And, then, neat. and then that's that. the front. Uh, can I... I'm oh, looking oh, for the And that's the that's front cool. of it. Uh, Pep's coming in pretty oh good. Oh, my so, God. I love it. That's... Ooh. Isn't that cool? And then... Uh, that's awesome. Uh, oh, he's, like. he's wearing it. And that, that's him wearing <laughs> it. Um, All right, guys. We're not going to tell Andre. And... We're not going to tell Andre. <laughs> <laughs> so just so you guys know. Uh, so, yeah. So I would just follow their... Um, I would just follow Creative Capers Instagram because then they're going to... They'll, they'll post more about that. Um, so definitely uh, keep track of that. So they're also going to sign those posters, get them out to you guys. And um, I don't have anything to give away on this one, obviously, because this is just the part two of the first one. But we're going to do uh, we'll do a second event. And I don't want to make any promises because I'm going to try to but I'm going to try to get more people involved uh, that were involved in the movie in and almost do some some version of like, a. Um, I guess at that point, it would then we would then it's no longer a Zoom meeting like this. At that point, it's like a virtual convention. Um, wow. You know, I, and I'm going to try to get something like that going after this thing, and and uh, we'll keep you guys posted on that. If 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 and when that comes about, we'll definitely have more raffly cool stuff to do. Um, uh, absolutely, from myself, um, at least. All right. So now uh, I think I've let everybody back in. Uh, now we got Tammy, Tammy Calamity, Cal- Calamity. Uh, that's a cool name. Cool, cool handle. Uh, the entire bio, uh, soundtrack of B2 has a melodic, oh, melancholic tone. Uh, minor keys. Yes, always with me, minor keys, because I'm a depressive person. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just who I am. I, you know, I'm always the tortured artist. I don't wear black turtlenecks, but uh, it's in my soul. Uh, give the appropriate tra- uh, tragic story, of course. How much of this was intentional on yours, creative, uh, creative capers part? Um, somewhat intentional. Uh, I was told, I will say this. When we started Bionicle 2, I was sat down and I was told, this is our Temple of Doom. <laughs> that, was, that was the start of the conversation. Now, I don't know how much you guys know uh, about the Indiana Jones uh, uh, movies, especially the original trilogy. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, yeah. So you have Raiders which was the adventure thing. And then Steven Spielberg, uh, I'm not implying that the filmmakers were going through a depressive thing, but you know, the, the, the filmmakers for, um, uh, for Temple of Doom, I think, I think uh, Spielberg, somebody was going through a divorce and it was, they were just having a tough time. So they made Temple yeah, of Doom and they ended up making yeah. this like, yeah, they were going through this like this hardship. And so they made this like super dark movie, way darker than they ever intended. Right. Mm. And so my meet, my meeting with my uncle too. Oh no, that was my uncle three was, 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 uh, I got, I'm getting it mixed up. Excuse me. I got it mixed up. So, but no, you're right. So that's the wrong story. I'm an idiot. Uh, but my uncle two is, uh, it's intentional for Lee Con to a point. Uh, and I was told to make it a little bit more somber. Um, that's right. They referenced they referenced Empire more, I think, with me on Bionicle Two. That's what it was. Bionicle Three. There was a little bit darker tone for uh, 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 Tem- uh, like Temple of Doom. But um, yeah, it was it was it was intentional a little bit. Uh, but I also just write a lot in that minor uh, key because um, major. A lot of major writing, especially I find in the middle of a movie, creates a sense of contentment. It's not even about happiness versus unhappy. It's about it, like, so like when you're so okay. So like when Jala and uh, you know when they're while when those oh, I always forget what's the somebody chime in. What is Jala? What is the other friend's name? Tukua. 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 So when Jala and Tukua are going through right, and um. And they're walking through the forest, and I'm doing that sort of like yada na 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 na. That's all major. Most of that is it's all major based, right? So in that moment in the forest, we're not worried about anything, right? It's creating a sense of contentment. And Bionicle Two, especially Bionicle Two, we should never feel content. So that's where the minor. That's where a lot of the minor stuff would have come from. Uh, so Eric, uh, I think I, guys, I'm running out of time slowly, so I'm going to try to move a little faster. Uh, which came out in the same year. Both stories. Oh, which came out of the same Those stories came out of the same year. Do you remember what software you used when making the soundtracks back then? Yes. I was back on then, Logic uh, primarily. Back I'm then, on I was Eric referencing the, um, I was referencing Mask of Light and the, and the Christmas Vacation movie that you did. He's, he's getting cute oh, to Eric. Oh, oh, I see. Yes, I, I, Eric. Now, Eric. I got it. I got I you. See. I got you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So Eric Hicks. Uh, thank you for that, uh, uh, Raid Master. I appreciate it. Uh, do you remember what software you used when making the soundtrack? So I was in Logic, uh, which is now owned by Apple, but back then it was a German company uh, mm-hmm. with like badly ported over uh, English instructions. So I would have to select, if I wanted to make a move, I had to select something that it did not even, like the selection in the menu did not even make sense remotely. Uh, and you would just have to learn the program well enough that you knew that this nonsensical thing was the, was the command to get this other thing going. Um, but I love those guys. It, it was from a company called eMagic, which I don't even think they, they probably don't exist anymore, but they were cool. Um, do I have any advice on how to make mini instruments like synthetic string instruments sound more real? Yes, I do. Uh, there's, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just say this quickly because otherwise anybody who's not music oriented will be bored. Uh, so Eric Hicks, uh, uh, controller, uh, continuous controller messages are your friends. Um, if you're writing strings and your, uh, MIDI data doesn't look like rolling mountains, then you're not doing it right. So you should be constantly moving that controller one, controller 11, get constantly moving dynamics arcing it how how you would want your music to go uh the second the second you're playing something and allowing it to sit stagnant it's not going to sound good uh that's 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 and everything else will come from there trust me uh all right so dexter during the creation of the bionicle movies did you have any communication interaction with greg now i i only am vaguely familiar with the name 
Um, but we talked about him. Uh, Marchin, right? March, did I get it right? The, I got it right this time, I think. Uh, it was me. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, kind of out of the blue. How did that come about? <laughs> so I talked about this a little bit in the first one. Uh, it really just came about because, uh, you know, technically, legally, uh, I'm probably not supposed to. Uh, technically, legally, if you look at the contract, I don't own that music, which is normal. That's not like, it's not some sort of like horrible contract that Lego bestowed upon me or something or, or whoever my contract is with. Uh, it's probably with Disney, actually. Um, but, that's, but that's very normal. In a studio, you know, you're hired to write a score, you write the score. And in most cases, with some exceptions, you don't, own, you know, because they're paying you to produce this music, they own that produced music. So I was constantly getting hit up to, to release the soundtracks. Technically, I, I shouldn't. So I was just like, well, I, I can't. And I had already asked Lego, hey, we should do soundtracks because people keep asking about it. And Lego showed, to be honest, they expressed zero interest in doing it. And they actively just saying, yeah, no, we don't want to do that. Um, and so I stopped at, by, I mean, honestly, by 2006, I stopped asking. Um, and then however many years later, whatever it was, what was it, 2016 or something? Um, literally, I had been cleaning out hard drives and studios trying to like you know go through which is like you know that's like composed that's like studio spring cleaning is going through the cabinets of like old hard drives and being like oh man what you know trying to figure out what still works what doesn't work anymore anyway so i came across all those original sessions and i'm and i'm still getting multiple emails a week and it was like you know what forget it just like screw it i'm just gonna put out the soundtrack because the they, they want it so badly um and and it's like and if i get hit with some sort of cease and desist order i'll take them down I never got hit with a cease and desist order. So, you know, so you get, you fans get to enjoy it uh, until this is posted online and they get wind of it and send me a, <laughs> send me a, a notice. Um, you know, but that's it really. Uh, it's just because the fans just wouldn't stop. Um, Mr. Prompted that. Yes, your email sort of prompted that. What's your favorite breakfast cereal? That is an amazing question out of the blue. Uh, what is my favorite breakfast cereal? I don't really eat breakfast cereal anymore. Um, the closest thing to breakfast cereal I do eat now is oatmeal mostly. But if if I wasn't worried, it, like if I just, like, it, we don't care anymore, uh, it's Raisin Bran. Huge fan of Raisin Bran. I can't explain why. It doesn't really make any sense because I understand how vanilla that is and not exciting. But uh I can't get enough of it. I mean, seriously, if I can have a bowl of Raisin Bran or a bowl of, I don't know, whatever the most amazing ice cream would be, it's going to be Raisin Bran. Just love this stuff. Um, try to get Faber involved in the next one. Who's Faber? Okay, so another part of the, like, original um, team. So, like, with the whole hierarchy, like, Bob Thompson and Alistair Swearer, some, like, the big story guys. Greg Farshti was hired to write the comics and books. Uh, Christian Faber was, like, the concept artist who was brought on and worked with them when they were first, like, developing Bionicle. He also directed all, like, the old promos and uh, commercials. So, yeah, he was, like, a certain part of that. He's been active on social media recently trying to hype up the idea of communicating with Lego over doing some sort of revival. No Seriously? one really knows. Yeah. He's been very vague about what he exactly wants to do. He's got a few, he's got a few things wow. in the pipeline. He's, he's doing something. To... Some of no us one, wonder no if one, he no even knows what he wants to do. No, no wonder you guys had that question about uh, it all sort of happening now. I did not know that. I was not aware of that. It's totally happenstance. So that further just tells me it's related. It's it's a it, that further tells me it's a dovetail of two situations. It's the fans meets uh, pandemic, one hundred percent. It's got to be that. It's it, it, I mean because if you're getting other guys because we're not. It's not like we're syncing up. I don't know. I had no idea. So it's got to be just the relentlessness of the fans, right? In the in the best way. I say that I, I'm always teasing you guys on purpose. I'm joking. With you. Um, combined with the time now to address it. That's got to be what it is, you know, because normally you only have time to return the emails and say, wow, thank you so much that you love the music. That's amazing. And then you hit send and then you're back to a phone call saying, hey, we want this. We need this. We need that. We need that. Right. You know, you're back into your life. Um, so now that none of that's happening and yet these kind of fan emails keep coming in, it's got to be a version of that. It's got to be, man, there's like no excuse now. We got to 
we have the time to give the fans what they want. So we're doing it. I mean, I know that's really what it comes down to for me. So um, I closed the chat window because um, I think we're wrapping up now. Let me check the time. Yeah, we are. I, we actually have a little bit more time for uh, a, a few more questions. So um, how, how did this, uh, I'll ask you guys this, uh, open format for a second. How did, how did this compare to the last time as far as like keeping it, you know, keeping it a little bit more like it's, it's mostly just me talking, answering questions. Do we like that more or do we not like that? Oh, more? It definitely feels well, a little yeah. more concise. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Personally, I mean, it, it works I'm, pretty what, well. So, yeah. yeah mind if right. I say something? More civilized now. Yes, but by, bionicler. Yeah. Well, um, um, <clears throat> well, what I loved about the first one was the openness of it all. Like we could just, you know, talk with each other over the, I mean, it was just, it was just. Yeah. I agree with that too. And that's, that's why I gravitated towards that the first time. But then the thing was, is that I think there was a lot of people that there were a lot of people that uh, weren't getting their questions. In. Oh, okay. And there were some people that weren't getting it because, because then it was, because then obviously there's only, there's only like a handful of people that are actively engaging. And then it becomes a thing where everybody's sort of just watching the handful of people actively engaging. So I think maybe the, the secret sauce will be some sort of a combination of the two, which is sort of what we're doing right now. Um, mm -hmm. One more question. How much did I miss considering how late I was? Oh, probably a good, I would, I, I don't know. I mean, probably a good amount, but I mean, uh, but this time it's all recorded. Um, so, <laughs> oh dear, that's a bad thing. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I knew it. I'm funny. just, I'm just adding that for, for comedic effect. Are you going to be oh, posting funny. somewhere? I don't, am I posting this somewhere? I am going to be posting this somewhere. Um, Where? Uh, I have no idea, uh, but I'm sure I'm sure it will be a thing no matter what. Uh, but and I'm sure I'm sure you guys will be made aware via Instagram and all that. Um, I'll also set up an email. Um, this is this is what I think. That, uh, I know because it really should be you guys on camera, shouldn't it? All right, this is what we're gonna do. So, uh, I don't know if this is even gonna work. But I would say try to send me uh, a video clip uh, to an email that we're gonna that we're gonna come up with the what that email is shortly, and send me a video clip. I will forward these video clips to the filmmakers, and they will go through them and then answer them on their Instagram uh, because they couldn't be with us today. Um, alternatively, if you're getting uh, what I would say though is when you send an email uh, with the question via video just in case the video like blows out on the email change on the send also type your question in and then uh i'm going to forward it to the to the filmmakers and try to get your guys's responses uh read back on camera um you know uh, uh you know from their instagram which i i think could be a good thing then also we'll stay tuned for some sort of a bigger bionicle uh interview convention-y the virtual thing we're gonna i'm gonna try to see what i can get going in the bionicle near future day events, perhaps a, a bionicle day events yeah. yeah well that would be essentially version of convention i guess yeah um if, if you didn't know august 10th is 8 10 bionicle day that's which right. is a, bot a lot of community events happen there's there. an official Bionicle Day. There is an it's official, official. Bionicle Day. There's two. I was so not official. I come up in the <laughs> no, day, years in my experience. How long has eight ten Bionicle Day been around? Eh? Uh, it's only been like two a couple years, years. I think. Yeah, it's I want to say it's new. two years. Oh, really it's new. But years. People just like yeah. the pun, so they roll with it. I just thought it's like it. It's cool. It, it's cool yeah, stuff it's where we get like commissions for like former comic book artists that worked on the comics back in the day. It's commissions just of their stuff. It's it's really cool stuff that they collaborate just for that specific day. <laughs> it's, like, it's like literally a. It's literally like a May the Fourth. Uh, pretty yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because because I know they'll they'll do big Star Wars conventions nearby in like San Diego or downtown LA here. Uh, and I'm not. I've been to one of them. I took my kid to one of them, and and it's. Cool crazy town they literally like there's actually not a whole lot of stuff that they do have stuff that's from the movies but a lot of it is actually just like literally entire wings that are like a fan competition of like who built the best r2d2 and some of them are crazy like literally like fully functioning 
like they basically pieced together robotic uh, animatronic pieces and then made like a wood shell and then coated that wood shell in like an aluminum frame it like people went nuts so it kind of sounds like um a version of that so um let, let's uh you guys hear it here first and by the way this is i'm not making a promise of anything per se because i'm literally you guys are in on the meeting this is me spitballing is i'll see if i can sort of spearhead a uh 810 bionicle convention i actually um, have virtual well, convention hey fingers i know crossed. one of the guys who's in who not in charge of because again it's not official but one of the guys who's hosts some of the bionicle day events the guy in charge of the wall of history uh, I can put him in contact with you if you'd like. You know, he might be able to set something up with you. Sure, we'll set we'll set up an email. Oh, so I see hands are raised. Let me uh, let me check to make sure which pages this is. On. See, that's the thing. This pages thing, man. Can't see everything. Okay, I guess see. For, okay, okay, I see it. All right, so I haven't really heard from Isaac Brown. I don't think so. Let me check Isaac Brown first. How do I? I wish I could just click on it and. Oh no! Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna call on Isaac Brown. You unmute yourself, buddy. Uh, hey, hey, Evan. Can you hear me? Hey, man. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, hi. Um, I just sent you a question over there. Well, like four questions, but yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, I closed that window. Let me uh, let me check it. Uh, this is a, the host will let you in. Okay, is somebody. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, Mexican filmmaker born in Tijuana. Nice to meet you. All big fan of soundtracks. So many... Okay. Did you ever meet the original creators and writer? Did not meet Greg. Uh, if I were to make a short film or stop motion, can I use your music as a reference? Sure. Who is your Thanks. favorite? <laughs> who's your favorite Bionicle character? Um, there's a couple. I'll get to that one in a second. Uh, and are you working on playing on another soundtrack similar to Bionicle? No. Uh, at least not in the vein of Bionicle. That's nothing that's planned per se. Uh, but I love, I love writing that stuff and I would love the chance to do it again. Um, uh, so, uh, let me close that. Okay. So, um, my favorite Bionicle character, I'm trying to remember. Today I'm going to be doing another video for you guys today since you guys seem to enjoy. Bionicle. What is happening? Uh, Raidmaster, mute yourself. Uh, Raidmaster, you're, you're, uh. Raymaster. Yes. Yes. Sorry. So, gotta... I'm sorry. I know you're right. Sorry. Okay. Shit, 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 shit. So, uh, so, um, I'm sorry. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, so, so, uh, which one is the, see, you guys are going to have to help me with the names. Is, is it Toa New? Which one is the, uh, the fire? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This guy. Uh -huh. The red one. Uh -huh. the red yes. One. Yes. 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 I see that in the background. Yeah. I was seeing in the background of Markle there. Yes, well, here's a, he's here's probably, the one, um, Tahu Nuba. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I like him. Um, and I'm his original his. form. Oh, well, um, I have yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. You guys have it all. So I'm, I'm a fan of that guy. I'm also a fan of, um, honestly, just Jala. I'm a huge fan of Jala. Oh, wow. And Lee Kong. <laughs> and Lee Kong. Dang, uh, because know, Lee, um, well, guys, I don't know um, if you're familiar with Reviving Bionicle. But, um, Dear Lord, I... <laughs> Dear Lord, please. <laughs> well, what what is reviving think, Bionicle? No, it's uh, a just a movie. just a web series that's been going on for a while. Basically, it's all uh, animated with the voices of Microsoft Sam. Fair, ooh we, it, um, it's a very <laughs> modern sense of humor. Let's let's go with that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. That sounds it sounds very uh, sounds very Gen Z for sure. Yeah, it's um, a guy puppeting his Bionicle toys and just making jokes with them. He uses your music, and it's a pretty fun series, but I don't think you did enjoy the humor. I might, I might watch it with my kid. Is it, is it anything like that? A, what is it? AS, ASDF. ASMR? Uh, uh, yeah, ASDF. Yeah. The, uh, the Stickman ASDF. animations? It's, is they the Stickman animation guy? Yeah, yeah. It's close yeah. to that, yeah. That's sort of like it's I like, like it's like the family. It's like family way cutaways advanced. <laughs> it's basically just just taking family way cut again, family guy cutaways and making that the whole thing. You'd have to watch um, it to understand. Oh, yeah. A little less it's, sketch uh, comedy. I'll, I'll check it out. But yeah, I'll check oh. it out. I'll check it out. That's but funny. What, uh, also, reviving Bionicle. Also so robot amazing. chicken for Bionicle. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Also, I remember you saying that Lee Khan was one of your favorite themes to, to work on as well. Yeah. Yes, we did talk about that earlier. Yeah. For I mean, sure. so wouldn't he be considerably one of your favorites too? Or well, did, yes, but that's that. but but that but it's a slightly different. Um, it was just that there was it was a good opportunity to write for Lee Khan that much. Yeah. And cool. uh, yeah, that's really cool. I really like him a lot. Yeah. And uh, I, th that opportunity was there, but I also still love the comma because of like his process and like you know his journey. So mm -hmm. it's. It's hard to it's hard to lock it down, but I definitely find um, I'm definitely going to gravitate towards characters that have uh, conflict or some sort of an emotional process that they have to go through. Um, so that's why guys like um, you know Makuta and and um, I guess the essence of Matanui or whatever those things are awesome and cool, but they're very sort of um, they very much live in their in their they stay in their lane, right? But then when you start to get into Jala, you start to get into Vakama, you're having you're dealing with characters that have a lot of conflict. There's characters that have to take a journey. And a lot of that sort of classic storytelling of, you know, I'm called upon to be something, to do something, you know, but that's gonna screw up the comfort that I'm experiencing or the 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 the, the continuity of my life. Do I, what choice do I make? And and those kind of you know those kind of journeys always excite me the most yeah. um oh, oh so uh yeah so let me let me let me move on to bionicler and then i'm gonna get francisco in that would be that was me as well that's me as well but yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 no i know I, oh you just because you still had your hand up no okay so well, i didn't know uh, if i asked your question yeah go on no well i mean also too is like um a, a couple questions actually um would i be would i what I'd personally be interested in seeing is like doing like a concept music from you because you said Toa Tahu was your favorite. So what would you do for his theme? What would you, what kind of music would oh, it be? Oh gosh. Like? Well, I remember what we did um, in the movie because uh, it was what the directors kind of felt like and it makes a lot of sense. It would probably be very guitar based. Um, oh yeah, you have a bit of electric guitar in there for him. Yeah. Yeah, that there was, was a little bit in there. A fun and, and little kept, thing. It was and it was and it stayed fun. We, I, that was one where I think I tried something a little bit deeper, and it was very it, and we found very quickly that that was taking us out of that world too much. It was a little bit too dangerous. It was a little bit too intense. So, um, well, when it, when Bionicle comes back, I mean, I think yeah, I yeah, I would say yeah, a little dropped. Uh, what they would say, dropped, detuned, D guitar, chuggy sort of. You know, I think Toa, I think, uh, I think uh, Tahu could get a little bit more uh, Power rage against, uh, uh, he could get a little bit more rage against the machine-y. Tahu goes full uh, gent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 like you could, uh, there you go. <laughs> no, well, I'm like, but. I'm, I wouldn't I'm, mind. <laughs> well, I mean, what yeah, I would so, like to. So, oh, go ahead, go it, ahead. It, well, I was just going to say, like, almost like, uh, um, I mean, I'm dating myself now, obviously, but that's sort of, um. God, almost like a Lincoln Park meets like uh, uh, like like a Lincoln Park meets um, like Rammstein, but then with orchestra. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, like so. So that would be the Toa Nuva stuff. Like it almost like it would almost be like um, like uh, like uh, like uh, like twenty years ago or some odd, however many years ago, Metallica did like the orchestra tour. Where it was Metallica playing, but with but with Michael Kamen, who's a great composer, was a great composer, um, who had created this whole orchestra thing behind Metallica for all their tunes, um, and something something in that spirit, you know, but with more of that sort of Lincoln, like with a deeper, harder, more modern edge uh, to it, would probably be my Toa uh, uh, Toa, Toa uh, Tahu stuff. Toa, uh, yeah. So, so friend uh, Francisco, you're up. Um, wait, what's, what was I gonna? Oh, okay. Um, did you have any discrepancies at some point with the directors of the movie in terms of music? Like you said, no, uh, this, this, this would go really well with the, with, with the movie, and they said, no, this, this won't work. Or, yeah, I mean, only in the only, only once that I can recall, which would have been the Rudaka theme. The Rudaka theme. I stretched out hard, which the extra I've been, it has been confirmed. I, I, cause I hadn't remembered. I did put, I did add it as a, as a, as an Easter egg extra thing 
for the Web of Shadows soundtrack. But the original Rudaka theme was this sort of like um, slinky 19th century Eastern European uh, uh, violin thing um, okay. that uh, for Rudaka, because I was trying to make her sort of, um, I was trying to find a way to make her venomous and plotty while making her feminine like keeping a sort of feminine energy about her and all this kind of stuff anyway it just kind of didn't land for 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 the directors and in, and in retrospect they absolutely i was a little disappointed um i mean i didn't i didn't fight for it. like so like i i i said hey here's my idea they're like yeah no and the second they say yeah no like okay cool and then i do the other idea i mean but yeah quietly i was like oh man that would have been kind of neat right in I retrospect it was totally the right call it was the right it was the right choice um but in that, that's the only instance I can recall. Um, everything else was a pretty nice, it felt like a pretty nice, you know, we slipped in together pretty easily. Um, when it, uh, you know, I, we were mostly on the same page the whole time. It was really, really awesome. awesome. Um, you know, I can't even think of what any notes like that were like sizable. With Rudaka, um, yeah. pretty much the rest of the fan base compensated there when it came to too much. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was too much. No, a bit of a fixation, let's say. Oh, has, oh, oh has yeah, a... yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, I mean, I personally and like, um, I personally liked the um, the original theme because I heard it myself. So, um, I I finally came up with the right, um. Because from what from what you described, I can only describe it in two words, which is like fatally seductive. Is that what you were trying to go for? Yeah, that, that's sort of yeah, seductive, but also um, I think basically what I was trying to do is I was trying to do seductive, but with like um, ancient is the wrong word, but but like uh, and old isn't the right word either. Uh, yeah, some sort of antique. Cla not classic either, like antiqued. Um, I, I, guess I, I, wanted it to, I, I wanted it to be seductive, but with like a with like a patina on it, which is why I went for that sort of solo violin, um, and then that sort of, um, and then and then you know a lot of that, um, a lot of that sort of uh, you know utilizing that sort of a lot of a lot of what I what I would what I attribute to be a lot of like sort of Eastern European, Russian. Uh, violin style playing where you do these really long connected notes you know, what they call portamentos or or slides um and that just lent itself to that energy for me so um but it but yeah but again we went we went with something more just sort of traditionally uh dark that was essentially a sister of like a makuta theme right so um well it's, yeah, very Darth Sidious -y kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's yeah. the Emperor's theme. The Emperor's theme. Is it yeah, 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 it's a version of the Emperor. Well, I mean, yeah, I would say yes, I guess it is kind of like the Emperor's theme. What's so funny, and in my mind it's actually the reverse. The Makuta theme would be an Emperor's theme and, and mm. Rudaka should be a Darth Vader. But I see where I see what you mean. Yeah, it's and, and because again, we need to keep her she's not taking a lot of action. I mean, she does a little bit in the end, but but she's not taking a lot of physical action, right? It's all, it's a lot of plotting, a lot of ideas, a lot of these kind of things. So it can't be a very aggressive theme. It has to be, it has to be this sort of like um, soft uh, undercurrent sitting under everything. You know, you don't know it's there, but, but you know, because she's being manipulative, she's being this, she's being that. Um, and so that's, that's, so that's where we're, you know, that's where we ended up, which is essentially the same thing i was trying to do before and the way we ended up doing it is just a little bit more of the um well, a lot more of a subtle way of doing it as opposed to a more mm. outward way of doing it so um uh, also I, I had a one one more question uh sure. you, you said that the last time you were going to uh, i don't know if released the like the stems of the some of the tracks Something like that. Yes, I yes I could. Uh, again, it, it's kind of like finding the, the the extras of like any cues that are, that or any pieces of music that didn't make it into the uh, the final. It it'll take a little bit of digging. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, going back into file folders that are 15 years old <laughs> and trying to find them. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, if I can find them and open them, then I'd be happy to show them in, in context. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't really, I wouldn't release them unmitigated. Yeah. Like I would just be like, here's all the strings from Masculite uh, by themselves. Um, but like I might show key cool moments or whatever, you know, stuff like that. The, the thing is, I, I'd, I'd love to um, work on making the, the music sheets, uh, the sheet music of, of some of the tracks. Oh, oh, you, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Well, if you, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you should, you should, uh, you could do that. And then, uh, if you want to, if you want to show it to me, I'll, I'll take a look at it too. You know, we'll, we'll awesome. Oh, let's set that, let's set up that email. Let's find an email, uh, that makes sense. Um, I know I've done them in the past, but as I finish doing them, I then usually shut them down. Um, let's, uh, let's do that. And then I actually got to bounce guys. Oh, we've been yeah. almost doing this for two hours, which is great. Uh, and I so missed good, yeah, uh, most of it. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. No. Um, but but uh, but like I said, uh, I'm, we're going to definitely be doing another thing. We'll try to get it going for maybe eight, uh, you know, eight ten because it sounds like there's some significance there. And I'm going to see who else who else I can trick and rope into joining us. Um, yeah. And there's definitely other kind of goodies that we can do for raffles and auctions and all sorts of stuff too. Um, and I'll, I'll try to make all that happen for you guys. So um, I just make it bionicle questions or something. <laughs> what would be a good bionicle name? First at gmail.com. What's it called? What's it called? Bionicle first, like your name. F U R S. Oh, there you go. Bionicle first. Okay. Uh, Bionicle first. Bionicle first. Bionicle first. Bionicle first. Bionicle first. Now, uh, uh, yeah, we, we'll do, uh, but yeah, uh, Bionic, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Uh, Bionic, well, no, I got it, I got it. Bionic something, something or other. Something. Yes. I'll, I'll also, I'll also, you know, I'll find it, um, because my brain is still farting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with it. I'll have my, it'll have, uh, it'll be at, it'll be at NathanFirst.com. It'll be, you know, Bionicle questions or whatever we're going to name it at NathanFirst.com. I'll announce it on my Instagram. Okay what that what that email will be i will probably end up doing that tomorrow just because there's a lot going on for me today um but so look out for the next day you'll hit those that email up with uh questions to the directors and i will forward it to the directors wait and then uh -huh. and then um and then i may yeah and then and then we'll we'll figure i'll i'll, I'll make other announcements uh at that point but we um you know, I am looking to do stuff, uh, and I know the filmmakers are into doing it too. Just more content, you know, to to sort of feed the fans and and let them know, basically let you guys know that we know you're there, um, and that we love you and we appreciate you. You know, even the, even if Bionicle is no more, you know, forever. Uh, well, right now, you know, we know the way I like to think. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Nathan. No, you're right. You're right. No, but um, the way I like to view it is that right now, because sometimes. The, the spotlight tends to shift around and then return to things. Right now, it's just not in the spotlight, but it will be again eventually. Yes, everything can be cyclical, you know, for sure. So um, so with that, guys, I want to thank you guys all very, very much for, for you know, being here and being so into, um, you know, being so into the, the, the story and the, the, you know, the whole thing of Bionicle. And it's such a cool thing and uh thank i know everybody for, appreciates you thank you for doing all these events yeah oh yeah no worries we're gonna keep them going appreciate it. this is so thank much you. fun yeah also too, what time well. what time will it be next time because what happened to me this time was because it was 12 last time for me but and i thought right and i thought hey it's going to be the same time again but it then it turned out you oh, were no, a whole... no 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 it, it changed until we changed it to 10 30. we just I actually entered uh i actually entered the last link <laughs> oh you went to the old link oh, okay <laughs> well, well it, we're, we're, we're taking on notes we're, we're gonna do what we're gonna do the next time will be um you know because this was actually this is mo this was mostly impromptu anyway i didn't even really plan on this it's just that there was there was so much to talk about the first time and we had to cut it short. So this is really just part two. The next one will be uh, a more obvious deal anyway. Um, you know, I'll, we'll do announcements and invites and whatever that time is, we will be obvious. There's um, a few people. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. It, it, it'll, it'll be obvious. So, um, so we'll just do that. And, um, 
and uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. We'll we'll be great. It'll we'll just keep it going, and uh, you know maybe that uh, you never know. Uh, crazier things that have happened uh, than fan up fan up war creating you know more movies. That's happened before. Um, too excited. Um, Don't get us too excited. <laughs> uh, any, look, said, anything's possible. Um, uh, nothing, nothing's ever impossible. What you said kind of reminds me of the recent news of the of the formation of Avatar Studios, which which is run by the creators of the original original Avatar: The Last Airbenders, a series which is arguably very similar. To Bionicle in some aspects, especially the uh, element bending, and I was, and that l- led me thinking that maybe, just maybe, something like that could happen with the Bionicle franchise. Yes, I would. I mean, that's the thing. Is like I, you know, I wouldn't expect it, but also never say never. Even like, if it is, even if it, if it is a bunch of unemployed fans fans who band together to make their own content i'll be willing to do to to be a part of that in some shape or form i would be yeah. a, i would be i would be i would be a part of i would be deeply involved in that in a heartbeat so so if there's any other way be sure to contact me in any shape or form on any of my social media accounts of course, man. Of course. So you, you guys heard it there I'm with I'm with Eric and, and Isaac too because I have a few I have a few ideas for the story like maybe some some reformations and whatnot and I'd really love to actually I'd love to get some of your guys' opinion too I mean in a on our own our own little fan talk sometime I uh, recently yeah, I, uploaded a I recently uploaded a video just which was which w- was premiering which ended just as this meeting turned up. And it was such an appropriate moment that, that I just want to say thank you for being such a wonderful fan base. Pleasure. You, you guys, you guys, you, you guys are an awesome fan base for sure. And you guys yeah. should, you guys should. Uh, that's a great idea. Is that you guys should get, you guys could do this too. You know, you get get together on Zoom and like come up stuff. And you certainly have, you know, you, old Kristen, you know, you certainly have my blessing or whatever to. To if you guys come up with some fan project or something, use I use make music scores. already. If you need music of. for oh, oh, who, anything you need, there, you, there you go. So, for, so, for, so Francisco Perez is a composer, and I think there are a couple other composers who have questions about music stuff here. You also have my full blessing to adopt, adapt the themes from Bionicle and reuse them, you know, re remold them into music of your own. Because I, I mean. I, I am no a believer matter that if they one, get copyright claims. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, 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 and look, As they, may, they, they may get copyright claims, but to be honest, I don't think so. Um, and yeah. I mean, and obviously they're not going to, the copyright claims are going to come from me. Uh, I don't think, I think um, I got to be all, I got to be honest about it. I mean, especially with how, how the soundtracks went. I, I, I don't think it's as much of a legal issue anymore because you know, mostly because it's one of those things where, like, it's it, it, it's sort of t- it's sort of it's its own thing. Like, it, it, it's buttoned, it's theoretically dead, right? Like, it's theoretically not, they're not doing any more movies or anything like that, or any more toys or anything like that. Yet, it's completely still exists. You know, as you guys have all kept it alive, so it no longer belongs to anyone anyway. So I think it's just a, one of those things where it's a sign of uh, at a certain point, art becomes uh, art be- belongs to. Um, you know, art belongs to the society as opposed to an individual. So, um, yeah. both, I, don't, uh, I don't, I don't think you would, I don't think you would get hit with a copy. Like both man, out, I, the Bullock band here and myself are actually part of a team of more than eighty people who are working on basically our own little Bionicle Four. We got voice actors, like perfect. audio engineers, all kinds of stuff. So, I'm hoping to send some of that stuff to you. See what you think. Oh, what, 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 um, what be sure to contact me, Eric Hicks. And it's sure. funny to meet two people. Eric, Eric, no, me, too. Too. me too, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, I, I got Eric I gotta run, but you guys should yeah, I gotta run, but you guys should definitely hook up with each other. And by the way, and that could also be a combination. You guys can get together and make a movie, use some of my score in it, and then also use Francisco to Brit, you know, whatever it's gonna be. You know, you guys can do your own thing for sure. And I think that'd be awesome. And I think um how do I word this? 
I don't think I don't think constant presence of Bionicle fans would be a harmful thing to that universe anyway. You know, that could only help create, you know, uh, the powers that be to decide, oh, we should make more of these things, right? You know, so um, I say, you know, Godspeed, go for it. Dude, keep going. Do it. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to bounce, guys. I It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you guys again. Bye, Nate, Stay tuned because there's more is coming. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, so well, I'm excited. Bye. Hopefully, Bye. hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, you guys. Time, hopefully uh, next time I'll, I'll be able to Bye. join. Oh, Tim Canahi. Yes, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll get there for sure, I promise. Take care, guys. Yeah, nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Follow yeah. Tim Take care. Bye-bye, thanks. No, not closing. Bye.